Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about personal finance, career advice, as well as having a career in technology. I have amazing news just in terms of passing my security plus exam, which is my first official professional certification. And I just wanted to kind of do like a free form video about how I studied, what I actually studied, as well as just advice for anyone who is currently studying for a certification. Just briefly, I'm gonna cover um, some of the materials that I use. Some of them you can actually find for free. And then there's also some that I actually got through subscription plans that if you have an employer that pays for things like O'Reilly or Pluralsight, those can be helpful. And just a little bit of background before I get into everything, I'm currently working in cybersecurity in a tech consultant type role. My background is in software development, mostly C Sharp. So cybersecurity is something I am relatively new to, so it's definitely not something I majored in in college, except I did get a school certification for computer security and digital forensics, but that was definitely a lot less um, than the certification that I just studied for. And I graduated in May 2019. I have officially been working in the full-time world for about a year and a half, and I have been studying for this exam since July. But in July, it was definitely really minimal, so I didn't really, really start studying, like reading textbook and stuff like that studying until September. And I actually took the exam last weekend, so that was the weekend before the 16th. But if you're also studying for the Security Plus, I use the all-in-one CompTIA Security Plus by Conklin and White. But yeah, that one was definitely pretty good. It went really in detailed, and honestly, I don't know if all those details really helped me on my specific exam, but and I don't want to say like something is definitely not going to be on the exam if it happens that we just had different exams. And, and honestly, they're just pulling questions from a question bank, so there's really no way for me to know what exactly is on your exam. Another thing that I used was Exam Compass, which is a online platform where you can take free quizzes. A lot of the quizzes aren't just for Security Plus. There's also um, the Network Plus, I think the A exam. I don't know too much about it, but a lot of the CompTIA exams are on there. And a lot of times these aren't like officially approved questions. So I think definitely keep that in mind and take it with a grain of salt. Everything that you are studying with, especially the material that you find all for free on Google, but I still think it's useful. So that's definitely something that helped me. And something else that I use was O'Reilly, which my company actually paid for, but you can find out if your school pays for it or you can just use a free trial and just see how you like it. Bon O'Reilly, I actually use a handful of books. I can probably also link those in the description. Most of these were practice questions. So I did practice questions from Exam Compass and then I also did practice questions from the official like books that I found on O'Reilly and a lot of them were CompTIA approved. So they're more similar or they were more likely to be similar to the exam questions. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, I read the entire book cover to cover, whether it comes to like those practice questions or the book like that I was talking about, the all in one by Conklin and White. I have never read a textbook in my entire life like that back to back. I feel like a lot of it was because I was getting really nervous and and honestly I did have a I did have like a study group um, at work. So we were doing study groups together or study sessions, reviewing practice questions, reviewing like a bunch of presentation decks. But that definitely did help, but I honestly feel like knowing that I read the book and at least have spread through all the information at least once, that if I see an acronym on the exam that I don't know, that I know it's like not something that's graded. Because on the Security Plus exam, there are actually like a handful of questions that they throw in there that have nothing to do with the exam material and they're kind of there just to set you out. Yeah, like those questions aren't even graded. So I don't know if other official exams do this, but Security Plus CompTIA does it. And just know that reading directly from the book and knowing that you have all your bases covered is really helpful because then you'll know when to recognize those questions because you've never seen them <laughs> and like you've never read them in a book or saw them in a practice question. So honestly, it's just really helpful just to know what you know and know what you don't know and that kind of helps you determine what is actually not graded on the exam. Definitely just keep that in mind, do some research on your exam and see what they cover and don't cover and like the structure of your exam because that's really important. And for the Security Plus, there's also practice questions that you can find directly on the CompTIA site. I think they give you like 15 practice questions and then one or two of the diagram type questions. And originally I thought that this was gonna be two to three questions where it's like they show you a diagram of like a network architecture or, or like they give you like a firewall um, configuration file and you have to edit it. I thought that was going to be like two to three questions, but I actually ended up getting five of those. That definitely freaked me out a little bit because my exam was 98 minutes. I spent 20 minutes on those first five questions on just those diagrams. So I had 70 minutes for the rest of my questions and it definitely made me really nervous just because I felt like I was always racing against time. I was literally down to the last second. I was still reviewing questions because I had like 10 questions I had in my review pile and I literally spent like the last like six minutes answering or revealing those answers and that definitely made me really nervous. 
and at the end they made me take a survey and also something else for you guys if you guys are studying for a big exam just know that you're never going to feel ready i was originally going to take it the week before and i actually took it i ended up cramming a bunch of studying into that last week because i just felt like i wasn't ready the more i went through things the more unready i felt i just feel like when it comes to something big like this and something that you're really working towards you're never gonna feel 100% ready. That's honestly not a bad thing because you can learn a lot just from taking it the first time and you can always have lessons learned if there's something that you have to take a look at and you'll know which answers or areas that you struggled in. So if you have to retake an exam, don't sweat it. Like I know the price to pay, the CompTIA Security Plus was like $350, $400. And I was so tempted to buy the one where you can have a retake exam like bundled together. Um, so two exams for like, I, I think you save like 20 or 30%. I was really tempted to do that, but then I was like, I don't wanna like get myself in that mindset of like failure i don't know or like having like a parachute but i mean some people it might give you peace of mind but for me i feel like it was just better that i took it and if i did fail then i'll just buy another voucher for the exam but of course it was super expensive so i really don't want to do that but and i'm glad i didn't but and another thing that helped me a little bit was the fact that i failed two classes in college and it cost me three thousand dollars to retake those classes out of pocket so that compared to failing a certification exam and retaking it for like three four hundred dollars feels very very different compared to giving a whole semester of your life to a class and paying three thousand dollars extra just to retake it so honestly i just kind of treated it like that you know like this one failure isn't gonna define your career isn't gonna define your future so that's one thing i try to keep in mind while i was taking this exam and yeah just that really helps with the testing anxiety if that's what you have because that's what i had so the next thing that i feel like i wanted to cover a little bit was just time management so you're probably taking a certification exam but that's not the only thing in your life you're probably also working you're probably also maybe going to school you probably also want to keep up with like your you know personal things on your personal time i originally started studying for this exam in july with my study group at work um but we only did like one session a week we would meet up for like an hour a week from july to august it just felt like those two months i really didn't do that much well it was actually like end of july so maybe a month and a half i really feel like i was not like head in the game i wasn't giving it like all of my attention i don't know so i really didn't care that much um because i felt like i had so much time because i was going to take it in october so basically i didn't really start studying until September. So it took me about two and a half months for this exam to study and pass. When I first started out, I knew that I had 570 pages from the textbook that I needed to read. And I split it across like the 60 days. I was originally gonna take it in like mid October, late October, but that ended up being pushed back a month to November. So just let yourself know that it's okay to push back these dates, but at a certain point, you're gonna know when you're just stalling versus you're actually not ready. So keep that in mind and yeah i literally just started out by reading like five pages a day ten pages a day and i felt good about it um when it, by the time i hit 100 pages it was probably already like mid-september and i really felt like i still had like 470 pages to go through and it took me half a month to finish 100 pages a lot of september i felt like a little bit unmotivated just because I also had been out of school for a year, so I wasn't used to reading from a textbook um, and having something keep my attention for that long, um, especially when you're thinking about like work. And a lot of times people think about, well, should I just be studying at work since this is like for my professional development or should I also be studying like outside of work? And honestly, I feel like it's up to you. I feel like some other people who are in my study group they may have studied only at work. I studied kind of both, but a lot of times I was just busier at work. So I ended up just having to study after work. Um, maybe at like five to seven, I would just start reading. And that sounds like two hours is a lot of time, but I honestly read so slow. And it wasn't until like the last 200 pages of the textbook where I really felt like I was getting it and I didn't have the attention span of like a hamster. And I wasn't checking my phone every like two paragraphs that I read because that's what it was like in the beginning. And it just got me so down on myself. What really helped me there was just Bowen telling me like, hey, you shouldn't set goals. Like you want to read 30 pages a day because honestly, that's unrealistic, especially when you're first starting out. Like maybe at the end of October, when I was like really pumped up, I only had like hundred pages to go. I was reading 30 pages a day. But in the beginning, I was reading five pages a day, like two pages a day. And it just made me feel like, it honestly just made me feel like shit because I felt like I set these unrealistic goals for myself that I wasn't reaching. And then I would just feel bummed out about it. And the next day I would just relate that feeling of feeling shitty to reading the textbook. And I would just not read for like four days. You should just make your goal reading one sentence, reading one word, reading one paragraph. After that, like you've hit your goal. 
And then from there, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to continue. After a while, I got the hang of it. I took the practice exam questions or practice questions at the end of every chapter. My book had that, but whatever that you're studying for may or may not have that. And of course, knowing your exam objectives is really important. Professional certifications are gonna have some kind of list of like acronyms or words or port numbers and network protocols, the OSI model that you're gonna have to know. When you look through that and you see that your exam has a list of like maybe 200 terms on it that you need to know and you look through all of them and you feel familiar with them, that's when you start feeling like, okay, you're ready. And reviewing that list is really helpful because it also tells you where your weaknesses are because in my case, my weakest area was access management. So honestly, it's not even a very technical concept either. Like if anything, I feel like for most people, it would have been cryptography. Knowing that, knowing what I don't know from the list of objectives for your exam that you're taking is gonna be really helpful. So basically I studied really slowly in the beginning and then towards the end in like November, the first two weeks of November before I took my exam, I was studying probably about 20 to 30 pages a day and I felt good about it. It wasn't like the kind where I just felt like I wasn't getting it in my head, but sometimes if I felt like my brain was kind of wandering while I was reading, then I would set up a timer on my phone and set it for two and a half minutes because that was the amount of time that I noticed was how long it would take for me to finish reading one page. Yeah, I basically set a two and a half minute timer, um, set it on like a lower volume so it doesn't give you anxiety every time it rings, but I'm gonna eventually, I know you start like thinking that it's gonna start ringing, but still, it actually helped me since it was kind of like a time boxing technique that you can do versus something where you're just timing yourself to see how fast you can read it. Because even if I hit two and a half minutes, I don't speed up, like I still read at my own pace. And if one page ends up taking me five, 10 minutes, then that's fine. But I just noticed that the standard page with standard information that I was comfortable with understanding and reading, that took me about two and a half minutes. So that definitely helped me not rush myself. So don't pick a time that challenges you, pick a time that you know is right for you. So yeah, that definitely helped a little bit just to get my mind focused rather than wandering and thinking about work or thinking about school or assignments. Yeah, that's honestly really what helped a lot because your brain is like so wired to jump to the next thing and the next thing. And if you're someone who is used to reading books, you're probably already gonna have this down. And so my last two weeks leading up to my exam, I was basically kind of cramming. I finished the textbook already. Um, I was only doing practice questions. And the week before my exam, I actually had that Wednesday off for Veterans Day. So I literally spent that whole week practicing this one book of practice questions. This definitely helped me a lot because it kind of put into perspective okay i already read the material but what kinds of questions are going to be asked based on the material that i know just to understand the lingo of the exam what to expect on the questions and anything that you get wrong just make sure you read the reasons why you got it wrong and try to fix that in your head a lot of the times like the topics i actually did from the practice questions i didn't even read in the textbook even though it's considered like an all-in-one because you should always study from multiple sources not just one textbook so that's why i recommend like a whole bunch of different things rather than just studying like one textbook or like going from one practice exam booklet. And yeah, honestly, um, my anxiety was through the roof. I pushed it back like four days and I still didn't feel like I was ready. And on Friday night, I finished the last chapter in my practice exam question book and I just scheduled it for the next morning. That exam, like just my experience, they kind of make you sit there and um, someone is like checking all your information, making sure like there's nothing on your desk. Um, you have to take a picture of your ID and like what's left, what's left right in front of you and behind you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about my experience, but yeah, that's basically just how it's gonna be. And then you literally just sit there and they're just gonna verify all the information is correct. And then someone's just gonna be sitting there watching you take your exam, which is kind of creepy, but you're not gonna see them. They're only gonna see you and they're gonna hear you. So make sure there's no one in your room, make sure no one's like walking behind you because that might get your exam revoked. If they heard anyone else's voice, even for a second, they had the right to cancel my exam. And yeah, um, I think that kind of covers a lot of it. It's definitely been a roller coaster the past two months or so. That's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m and Sundays at 12 p.m. And now I'm just really grateful that I'm gonna have more time to put into my videos and this channel. And I really do wanna spend more time coming up with better video ideas because I know the last two months, I'm sure you guys have noticed this. I've been kind of slacking. I would just bulk film videos just because I knew that I had to study for this exam. But thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting the channel. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.